Hello and welcome. It's uh, 4.0 is almost out. We're really excited and it's time for videos. I'm on the hook for videos. So I'm excited to show a lot of the great work. It's getting close to the end of the day. It's a Friday. So I'm going to do my best on this one. Uh, this is actually going to come out a little before the release. So this is going to be the ignition connector. This is a new connector into ignition from Hybite uh, in 4.0. Mostly because I want to. we want to get a little bit of feedback on this. Uh, and kind of refine it maybe before release, but we're also excited uh, just to kind of show this capability. So you're also going to see some new, like Brent, I'm, I'm going to be working out of a development build, so you'll see some new pipeline stuff. So we built a custom ignition connector. So the first question obviously is why would we go and do that? We can connect to ignition over OPC UA in industry standard today. We can also get data from ignition over MQTT, either in JSON format or Spark Plug B. So why go do the work to create a connection? Uh, the real reason is the user-defined types, uh, which we feel are really important. Uh, those are not exposed over OPC UA as part of the structured data uh, custom protocol, not custom, but standard of OPC UA. The ignition server doesn't support that. We don't see that changing you know, in the near term. And then uh, it is supported over Spark Plug B in the template, Spark Plug B template format, but it requires customers to adopt MQTT and Spark Plug B. And depending on what they're trying to do, that might not be their strategy. I mean, MQTT is great. We see it used a lot. But if you're trying to do something simple, you know, the requirement to adopt those technologies might not be ideal. So hopefully, too, by the time you get to the end of the demo, you'll kind of see, you know, the light bulb will go off and you'll see why we did this. You can do some pretty cool stuff. So what that is, and I'll actually uninstall it quick. Uh, there'll be a new download from the website, a module for Ignition. Uh, I have that locally. I've just built it on my system. So it'll look like this. You'll download that from the Hybite website and then install. It'll look like this. It won't say module signer. It is self-signed, so it'll have a certificate. And then uh, you'll see this installed. And then in terms of settings and ignition, it's really minimal, right? You just have the port that it's hosting on, and then you can secure it uh, with a password. It is secured. The, uh, it's a secure WebSocket that communicates back to, to, uh, to Hybite. So in Hybite, under Connections, you'll see a new Ignition module. I have one already created. If you're familiar with our Pi agent, this is really similar. You know, we've got a host, a port, uh, the token, the password that you'd set, and then connection timeout stuff. And then once you've got that, now you've got access to Ignition. So what can you do? Uh, you've got inputs and outputs. You can browse. Here I'm seeing all the tag providers uh, available in Ignition. I can browse in there to see the data. I can select folders. I can select UDTs. I can select tags and read those. In this case, I've selected uh, a Portland uh, group. And if you expand that, you can see this is the data that I'm reading from Ignition. And if I pull up the designer and I go to default, you can see I've uh, kind of put a namespace in here, Portland, Portland Area 1, line. And I could, I could read the root of all this. I'm deciding to, to pick this node in the address space. Uh, and then there's UDTs. Those UDTs are motors. They have you know, this data set, amps, state, volts. It's a little lame, but you know, for the purpose of this, I've got multiple motors. Cool. And now that's in Hybyte. So what can you do with it? Well, now that it's modeled data, right? You can either model data in Hybyte, or if it's modeled in the source system, you can move that through, modify it, leave it as is, you name it. Let's just say we want that data in Snowflake, and we want it in this case in a table that's uh, controlled by the the UDT name, so the model name. So each UDT type will have its own table in Snowflake. Now we could do this a number of different ways in terms of how we organize that data in Snowflake, but let's pick this simple case. So to do that, we'll jump into pipelines. So we'll have a two Snowflake pipeline. This UX is in flux. It just went in this week, so you're seeing some brand new stuff. We're going to continue to refine it, but we're pretty excited. Uh, left to right is one of the big changes, but lots of other stuff in here. But you can see under construction, it's this is in the works. Uh, so this pipeline, what it's going to do is wake up every second. It's going to go read that ignition input that we had set up, uh, and then it's going to go pull out all the UDTs from there. So it's going to create, you know, that's one big payload of data. We're going to break it into the UDTs. I'm going to buffer those UDTs by UDT type. In this case, there's only a model in there, or motor, sorry, in there, uh, either for 10 updates or 10 seconds. Then I'm going to send it to Snowflake. And this buffer key is just saying, put it in a motor table because I'm buffering by the, the UDT name. I'm also going to drop that into the UNS. This is just an MQTT broker in high byte, but could be any MQTT broker. Uh, so you can see it in real time. So let me bring up the UNS client. We'll connect in. And then what I'm going to do is go back and turn on this flow. And once a second, again, this is going to wake up. And if we look, we can see that's the, you know, this is the ignition uh, address space being published over JSON and 
uh, or MQTT and JSON format. So you can see we're adding a little bit of metadata, but you can control this if you want. Uh, this could be Sparkplug B as well. We could create a Sparkplug B output and send it the same way. And then if we jump out to Snowflake, which I was doing this kind of before the demo, so I'm cheating a little bit, but you know we're publishing real, uh, the data up into Snowflake into a motor table, name path, the same information you saw in the UNS is now yeah, in Snowflake. And then what's really cool about this is I can go in and it's all dynamic, right? So I can say, hey, I'm gonna copy, add in motor three. This is gonna show up automatically you know, in, the, in that pipeline. Uh, and then here I could say where, I think it's underscore name. I think it's single quotes, uh, motor three. And you'll see that's already getting published, right? So uh, it's dynamic. As things get added and removed, you, that'll show up in uh, Snowflake. And we could have moved this to Pi. We could have moved this to AWS SiteWise. We could have moved this anywhere, right? But that data and the model go with it. So that in this case, that model is the schema that you're seeing here. And we're, we're adding some metadata in here uh, by default, but you could control that in the pipeline if, if we so choose. Uh, so the other aspect of the ignition connector is writes. So for outputs, we can do the same thing. You can browse. Uh, and if I open one of these up as an example, the tag address includes the tag provider and then a create switch. So we will create the provider if it's not there, if the switch is enabled. A uh, little caveat here, it's a little tricky. You should not write to providers that Hybyte has not created. So I wouldn't put in default here and turn this on. Weird stuff happens uh, in Ignition. So and we might try to block that in the future, but in any, in any case, it's pretty dynamic, which is nice, but you could get into some trouble. So make sure these are Hybyte defined tag providers that we own. Otherwise, turn this off uh, and we'll just write to existing tags that are there and other providers, and that works fine. So in this case, uh, you can just write structured data out to the provider. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go grab Pi data that's modeled in Pi Asset Framework, and I'm going to flow that down into Ignition. I think when I went to this, this, this stuff, uh, it was pretty cool uh, for a Friday to end on this note. So if I pull up Ignition, we've got a database up here. It's a fertilizer demo, so it's got a line. It's got some crushers, mixers, kind of a demo of a fertilizer plant. And this is um, this is the Pi tool, right? I'm showing you Asset Framework, and you can look, and these are model types. So Crusher has attributes, very similar to Ignition UDTs. It's the same concept, just different system. Uh, and this is all backed by Pi points, which I'm not going to be able to get access to here. Uh, but in, you know, in Hybyte now, you can, or always, you can create a Pi connector here. I'm going to go target that line, and I can do a test read. And similar to what we saw in Ignition, although there's more information, you know, we kind of have that same structure. So I want to take this from Pi and now push it into Ignition. So in a similar fashion, I have another pipeline that wakes up every second, goes and reads the Pi data, uh, does a slight transform just to take it out of an array syntax, uh, grab the first element because the Pi returns an array of elements. And same thing, I'm just going to send it to Ignition, and then I'm also going to send it to UNS. I guess we'll go look. I forget what I had done there. Uh, but Ignition, I'm just going to land it in a tag provider, and then it's going to build out the entire line hierarchy uh, on its own. So with the create switch on. So I'm going to turn this on. We can jump into the UNS client. I, I guess I put it under a test topic. You can see this is, I'm doing nothing in here to kind of uh, break this into topic hierarchy, although I could, just one big payload. Uh, and then the to Ignition piece, if I pull up the Ignition designer and I go to that Pi data, you can see, this is so cool, uh, the same structure that was in Pi, right, is now in Ignition, and it's modeled. So these are UDT instances, and this data is updating once a second. And if I go into the UDT definitions, you can see I have those definitions. And This is a little weird, but if we copy the JSON, the data types and everything are there. Um, and it's all there. And in a similar fashion, you know, if I go up into Pi, let's have it, I've not tried this, so let's just give it a go. Um, no, this isn't going to work. Pi's going to yell at me. Anyway, if I if I could just copy paste one of these, oh, I did it, and then I'm going to check it in. It's a Friday. We might as well go off the rails. This should flow into ignition. Fingers crossed. Let's, we got to refresh it. It is not. 
Um, there might be, let's go look quick. I'm curious. Oh, SciPy inputs. Let's see if it showed up in the data. Interesting, it's not. Pi is weird about checking stuff in, so I don't know. Maybe there's no data for it yet. Anyway, I'll continue to play with this. It should it should work, uh, but the fact that it's not showing up in the data shows something. But it's it's super dynamic, right? So I can go into ignition, uh, go to the output, and if I just want to add additional data to that Pi data provider, you know, we can. This is our test write feature, but I can say my tag ten. Bam, and it shows up. So this is a really early version. There's lots of places we could take this connector, but it's you know we fundamentally created it because we wanted to share user-defined types as well, uh, and, and kind of flow those between systems and synchronize systems. And there's all kinds of really cool stuff you can do as a result of it. So send us your feedback. If you're interested in an early version before uh, the 4 release comes out, let us know. We can send you an alpha. You can kick the tires on it. Uh, and give us some feedback. But until the next one, thanks. And I am back because while I was reviewing the video, I pulled up Designer and there it was. So it did work. Uh, there was just the delay in the propagation of the commit to Pi and then for it to flow out to the agent. Uh, we do have a fairly large Pi system we test on and I'm not hugely surprised there was a delay, but um, just wanted to show that it, it was working. Crusher 1 showed up and that is a week. So I'll see you Monday.